afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel it is friday afternoon uh, it's quite blustery quite windy out there uh, not much rain but we've had some thunder and lightning over the past 24 hours uh, that warm humid weather always brings that out anyway so it's just part and parcel of the whole thing uh, don't forget to hit the sub button if you're not already a subscriber leave a like in the video and comment down below uh, ring the little bell when you're hitting the sub button just gives you a notification every time i post a video try to get videos out uh, at least twice a week three times a week most weeks so what are we doing today well 2850 has been sitting here for about three between three and four weeks now hasn't done a whole pile uh, cattle have been out uh, so it's kind of just been sitting up uh, all the wind we've had has blown all the dust up around it you can see uh, it is quite dusty now at the minute i think the back window was actually left open at one point so it might be quite dusty in there as well so we're going to take it out we're going to we're going to hitch off the the, the abbey diet feeder for now we'll turn around and hitch it off in here in the shed uh, we'll take the 2850 out we're going to get it onto the wash bay we're going to hose it down give it a good sponging down and we'll have a look around and see we might need a wee bit of a cleaning inside and yeah maybe get it ready for some hay walk next week uh, we're going to need it. It does some of the tedding usually, so I want to get it ready for that. Have it ready if the weather comes right that we're ready to go. So let's get going at it. So, 24 hours later, and 20 or 50 still isn't sponged down. Uh, it started off yesterday, you might have noticed when we pulled it up to the wash bay up here, uh, you might notice that the tractor itself was very white. Uh, when I started to hose it down, it was less white. A torrential shower rain came in between, the, in between me parking it there and me starting to wash it. So that kind of delayed the process of getting it washed. Uh, I only had it hosed down and another torrential shower rain came. Uh, time it dried up was too late we were finishing off for the evening uh, today we've had almost non-stop rain uh, some heavy showers it might ease off a little bit like it is now it's just very very light at the minute but it starts up again it's been like that all day so we've had a lot of rain we have enough rain now we need some dry weather uh, to get the grass is growing very very well I have to say over the last like two, 10 days or so but we need some dry weather now for, for making a little bit of hay so 2850, as I say, is hosed down. It's not sponged down, but it has come up fairly well now. 
it's soaking wet here, it's outside in the rain all day. So if the sun came out and it started to dry, you would see a lot of dry uh, white streaks in it um, because it hasn't been sponged. But we'll get it sponged over the next few days. Um, we'll have a look at what we were doing today. We weren't, we weren't doing nothing today. So we're gonna head over to the machinery shed and we'll see where we were at or up to today. So over in the machinery shed and the bonnet's off on the 6 9 Well, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, just do it service. Uh, we service the tractors at we service the tractors at 300 hours usually in or around so um tractor has more than 300 hours on it i think it's actually up to about 340 40 since its last service so just do it service uh, so earlier on we left the tractor running for about an hour uh, a little more than an hour just to get the the oil nice and warm in it and we pulled it in here then took the sump out of it and sunk the bung out of it and uh, just dropped the oil out of it so we let, it's 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 dripping away there now we may even leave it overnight and uh, we can come back then and we'll we put the put the new oil put the put the bung into it first obviously and then new oil into it so um yeah we'll change the oil filter on it as well uh diesel filters don't need to be changed on this run uh they were recently enough changed so uh we don't usually don't change them every time there's no need to our, our diesel would be fairly clean uh, it's always pumped in and then it's left it gets some time then to settle in the tank and then we can we can fill the tractors out of that so uh, it's not like we're working a lot with drums or uh, anything like that so it's we don't usually have much diesel filter issues uh, but we do change them every couple, couple of three services usually that's the way we work it um what else yeah a bit of dust in around here just noticed earlier on when we had the bonnet up uh yeah we'll have to we'll have to just do a little bit of uh, hosing down on that all the dry weather we had earlier on in the year um yeah just dust from that and i think that if you remember back to the silage time we had a bit of an issue with uh these panels here blocking off with dust and small bits of grass so uh, there is little bits of stuff still on it not too bad but when i'm hosing down the the around the engine i'll maybe pull these out and just hose them down as well just to keep it right uh air filter was changed the last time i think it should be okay yeah it looks looks not too bad i think we'll just pull it out and have a quick look yeah like it's it's pretty good in there so yeah air filter will not have to be changed for uh for a little bit yet um it'll do till the next service uh so that is the tractor and what's going on with it um Eric, but we had a bit more of a job to do a bit or a bigger job to do shall i say on the mower uh not that there was, there was nothing wrong with it either but um coming from the factory the mowers are all set up at thousand speed pto it's just the way they are it's they're set up like that because anybody running uh anybody running a front mounted mower front mounted mowers or front ptos and tractors only run at thousand speed pto so um they're, they're set up to to match that so uh we want to change that back. We want to get it to 540. We don't need, we're not going to be running a front mounted mower anytime soon. And we don't need the tractor revving out at almost full revs uh, when it would do it in 540 or even in 540E a lot of the time. We'd, we'd run the mowers in 540E actually probably 80% of the time unless there's a couple of fields with bad hills in them. We'd want the extra, the extra revs uh, just to, to, to help you over the hills and that. But yeah it's 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 just easier on easier on diesel and probably easier on the tractor as well as not having to be revved out as hard so what did it all entail to do this job well it wasn't that big of a job but it just took a little bit of time just to get it done uh four bolts here on on either side so it was eight bolts in the, in the bottom part of it they had to be all loosened out and that released this bottom frame here the, for mounting the mower that drops down to the ground you pull that back out of the way uh, the next thing you have to do is you loosen the jubilee clip here and that releases the pto shaft you can take that off and once you've that done then uh, that's the whole bottom end of it it's ready then for for turning the top end of it then another eight bolts uh, either side same way as the bottom is and that then uh, allows the the gearbox then it kind of sits there it's there's little there's little grooves here welded on the inside that the, the gearbox kind of just sits on. Uh, so after that, it's a matter of just sliding it out. There's another shaft that runs down, um, down to here. There's a bearing then here that it runs on and you connect then your long PTO shaft onto. But that shaft then, it just slides 
uh, it slides into the, the gearbox on that side. So once you actually get it out, you, you just pop it onto the ground. You have to change, there's a couple of little air breeders here you have to swap around and there's one here and there's one here. You just have to swap them around that they're both pointing up. And it's basically swapped the whole pump 180 degrees. So uh, the side here that is now has the PTO connected to the PTO connection for the tractor on it, the PTO shaft, uh, it was back in this side here. So you just basically 180 degrees swap. Uh, so simple enough, it, but it, as I say, it just took a little bit of time uh, to put it all back together. And that should, uh, that should leave the machine a little bit easier to run when, uh, whenever we are back at the hay. So uh, it's something we've been threatening to do since we got it. We weren't 100% sure, we just had to make a call and check it out with, uh, with clocks where we bought them more. So yeah, done that. This is a very simple operation. Actually, I looked at it then, we should have, should have actually looked at it at the start. I looked in the, the, the owner's manual for it and it shows you exactly how to do it. So yeah, as I say, simple, simple operation and uh, should leave it a lot easier. Uh, for anyone wondering, there's the panels of the bailer, the old bail, or the, the old panels of the bailer. Uh, you can see, Oh, they weren't too bad, probably would have done. You probably could have knocked some of it out of it. Probably panels worse than this on some balers uh, where they get backed into stuff. But you can see where it was, uh, it was damaged in the recovery of it, let's say. Uh, and the same with this in here. So that's why these here were all replaced. Uh, this here is a little bit worse here, but you could get them knocked out if you really, really wanted it. So that is the panels. Uh, Ted Ayo, what has to be done on it? Well, not that much. Uh, quick greasing and we'll pull it out. Uh, I intend to, when the 2850 is washed, I'll hitch it onto this and just pull it out and uh, I'll give it a good hose down. Uh, there's two of the wheels I see. One of them in particular here is quite soft. You can see it there. So uh, yeah, give it a, give those, we'll just check the four wheels, give them a pump and have it ready for action as well when the weather does change so we're ready to go with it um, you can see it is a four a four rotor still hasn't been changed to a six rotor so uh not gonna say much on that at the minute but uh i'll maybe talk a bit more about that when we're using it at the hay depending on on what happens um yeah the square bailer not that awfully much to be done to it either uh just grease it up and give it a hose down uh, we usually make, what we do is, uh, we make about a thousand square bales of hay, usually. Uh, we have a few customers for small square bales, and look at if anyone wanted more small square bales, if anyone locally even that uh, would like a few squ small square bales, you want to put in an order or anything like that, uh, give me a shout, and we will, we will make bales to order. So if you wanted a hundred bales, we'll make you a hundred bales. Uh, a few small square bales is very, very, very useful, especially uh, if you have a sick animal, cow that's maybe calf, something that's sick, uh, they'll eat hay when they'll eat nothing else. Uh, so that is that. What else have we got? More. This one here is ready to go as well. Uh, we'll just give it a quick greasing and yeah, nothing, nothing to be done to it. So that is the mounted more. Uh, baler, obviously, it's ready to go whenever we are ready. Uh, hopefully it works okay. Um, put the net in it and got it all all threaded up if you like. And yeah, so hopefully it'll work okay. It should do. I don't see why it shouldn't. Everything seems seems very good in it. But you never know until you go to use these things. Uh, you could have small teething problems, but uh, hopefully it's all all right. Um, looking forward to, to using the monitor because uh, it's a little bit different than the older balers. You have a, a digital, uh, it's like a, it's almost like a bale building. Uh, let me see if I can go pro just sit there. Uh, yeah, you can see what way the bale is building here on each side. And if it was a little bit lopsided on one side than the other, uh, you can move over in the row and fill it up. So uh, just a little bale building indicator, if you like. I'm looking forward to seeing how that works. And yeah, great job. Should be a good job. Uh, there is a, a drop floor on this baler, so it has all the newer technology. It's very similar to, there's very little difference in this here and the 441. The only difference, and it's quite a big difference I suppose, is that the 441 has the extra roller in it that this hasn't got. So in extremely dry conditions, uh, in straw, it can sometimes, the, the bale may not spin on it. So um, 
we'll not be bailing much straw on it, so it shouldn't be that big of an issue, I don't think, for us. Uh, but there's, it's got the newer type intake, this bail off, uh, similar to what's in the, the 441, so they're a bit of an animal to, to intake grass. And yeah, look at it. We'll, we'll look at it and chat about it a little bit more whenever we get whenever we get it to the field and get using it and check it out. So looking forward to that. Oh, I almost forgot one of the most important parts of our hair making operation. Let's go find it. So last bit of machinery, the hay bob, and we almost forgot about it. Uh, yeah, so it's here in the loft. So it's been up here since last, early autumn last year. Um, yeah, it's more or less ready to go. Just checking around it here. I don't think there is any tines broke on it. They all look to be intact. Uh, so we'll just have to, We'll spray all the times just where they where they swivel around and where they go up and down. We'll spray those just to to get them freed out. Uh, we'll have to throw a shot of grease in it, just grease grease any of the greasing points, and we'll check the tire pressures. But that's really it. Uh, it's a fair good here, Bob. We have that since 07. We bought it new. It's done a lot of work. It's one of those mess crawls, and we've always kept it well greased, and it has served us very very well. So. Uh, quite happy with it. Now, there is a little bit of a wobble in one of the wheels of it. Uh, not the wheels, one of the reels. Um, but they can be straightened. Uh, what happened to us? Well, about three or four years ago, we had a foreign guy working for us. And we sent him out to do a bit of tedding. We were under pressure, needed an extra driver. He'd done a bit of turning and he turned part of the ditch as well. So, put a little bit of a wobble in the, the reel. But they can't, I think it can be taken out. There's a guy down the country does them. Uh, down, is it down Tullamore direction or down that way somehow? So we'll have to take the reel off and send it in maybe or go down with it and just get it straightened. But uh, yeah, we like it. Love, love that, the old hay bobs. Uh, in a good man's hands, you can do good work with them. In a bad man's hands, they can be a torture for the bailer man. So uh, it just depends who you have piloting the hay bob. So that's it. Um, yeah, the the gates for it here, if you like, or the wind rowers are uh, for making the wind rows are they're they're here just underneath a little bit of pipe work, and yeah, so that is that. Uh, so head back down. Uh, maybe at some stage I'll do a bit of a video on how vintage machinery. I've never done anything on it yet. We've quite a quite a bit of vintage machinery. A couple of sheds full of stuff, uh, and we'll have a little look through them. Uh, we've actually two very nice tractors. For anyone's looking for a vintage tractor, we have these quite a while there's uh, a Ford 8N 1940 I think it's 1947 or 1949 uh, I'll find that out yeah, I'm not that big or up on them um, and then we've got a 1953 Ford Jubilee the first Jubilee uh, so two of those and they would be for sale if anybody is looking for them uh, very very good condition uh, just need a bit of a tuning up but uh, yeah I'll do maybe do a bit of a video on the vintage stuff if there's if there's a uh, if there's enough comments of people asking for it, I'll do a bit of a video on it. Uh, very good Albion binder as well, but we'll see. If you want a video on it, throw a comment down below and let me know if you want it. That's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the first part of this haymaking, getting ready for the haymaking. Uh, be more videos now over the next few days. Going to be running uh, three or four videos, just getting everything ready, getting the, the tether out, getting getting the hay bob down, all the bits and pieces, going around greasing them, a bit of maintenance to them, and... It, it'll be something something now for the coming week uh, and hopefully we'll uh, get a bit of hay made then uh, mm -hmm. later on this week or late. weather forecast is saying that it should dry up later in the week but we don't know we'll just have to see so that's it uh, as always thank you very much for watching don't forget to hit the sub button if you're not a subscriber ring the little bell uh two to three videos a week and uh, that's what we try to aim for and yeah leave a comment down below like the video all that stuff see you in the next one